life as it is today. Shopping, shipping, trading, selling, buying, all while sitting right at our computers. It's no wonder our bodies are feeling a bit stressed, and it's more than our clicking finger that's feeling it. Hi, I'm Mike O'Neill. As a certified professional ergonomist and workplace consultant, I've seen many instances over the years of repetitive strain injuries that could have easily been prevented through the use of simple exercises. More and more of us are spending more and more time at our computers. Because of this, more people are falling victim to repetition strain injuries, or RSIs, a new health concern that's sweeping the country. RSIs include carpal tunnel syndrome and various types of back injuries. That's what we're here to help with. We're here to teach you some simple exercises that will strengthen key muscles and ease tension in those key muscle groups, thus reducing your risk of injury. Following these exercises, we're going to give you some pointers on proper positioning of workstation components and some ideas on how to change the way that you interact with your computer. Jamie who's an intensive computer user, is going to help demonstrate some of these easy-to-use daily exercises. Let's start with two areas that are highly at risk to injury in computer-intensive work, the hands and fingers. Before you begin, we recommend that you stand up and shake loose a little to warm up muscles as you would for any exercise. Okay, let's take a look at those hands. We're going to begin with an exercise called the hand fan. This is designed to release tension in the wrist and waste products from the carpal tunnel. It also promotes good blood flow to the fingers. For the hand fan, simply rotate your palms facing upward and with your fingers extended, pull your hands up in a fanning motion and repeat this 10 times. We have two more exercises that help in this area as well. The first is the hand pull. It's in effect a backward hand fan. Palms facing downward, extend your fingers, and pull your hands up toward you as if you're waving. Repeat this 10 times. The next exercise is called the hand release. Again, palms down, Fingers extended, simply close and open your hands. Repeat this 10 times. To strengthen the wrist and flexor muscles, there's the finger stretch. From a seated position, arms in front of you, interlace your fingers and turn your hands so your palms are facing away from you. Push outward. You should feel the stretch in your wrists. Push against your wrists and alternate the pressure, repeating 10 times. Finger flicks relieve cramping and fatigue in your fingers when you've been mousing or keyboarding a lot. From a seated position, clench your hands and simply flick your fingers outward. Repeat this five times. Let's move to the all-important thumb. We have two exercises that will help relieve tension and stretch the thumb abductors and flexors. Flexors run along the palm side of the thumb. The abductors run over the top of the thumb. These exercises also help increase circulation to and from the thumb. The first exercise is called the thumb push. Place your arms on the armrests of your chair for this exercise and make a fist with your right hand. Point your thumb of the right hand up at the ceiling and bring your other hand over, palm facing your extended thumb. Press your thumb into the palm and hold it for five seconds. After five seconds, relax it and repeat this five times. The next exercise is the opposite of the thumb push. It's the thumb pull. Put your arms in the same position. We'll start with your right hand first. Uh, make a fist with your right hand, extend the thumb up towards the ceiling. Now take the thumb from your other hand and place it in the back of that extended thumb. And what you want to do is pull the thumb that's pointed up towards the ceiling towards you 
and put pressure against it with the other hand. Hold that pressure for five seconds and then release. Five seconds and then release and repeat that five times. Another good exercise for the thumb is the thumb sweep. It releases tension in the thumb muscles. Place your arms on the armrest, palms facing up to the ceiling, and extend your thumbs outward at about a 90 degree angle. Sweep your thumbs across your hand until they touch the base of your pinky finger. Repeat this exercise 10 times. An exercise designed to help stretch the thumb extensors and abductors and also release tension in your thumb is called the hidden thumb. In this exercise, make a fist and tuck your thumb inside. You can do this with both hands at once and keep your arms braced on, on your armrests. Tilt your wrist forward until you feel the tension. Hold that position for 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, release the tension by tilting your fists upward again, and then repeat it, holding for 10 seconds for a total of five repetitions. Now for the wrists. We want to release tension in our vulnerable wrist area as well. The wrist twist will help us do just that. Again, from a seated position, Extend both arms in front of your body, rotate your wrists as far as is comfortable in one direction, and then in the other. Repeat this five times. It's also important to elevate blood circulation in the wrists and the carpal tunnel. Here's an easy exercise called the wrist roll that's good for that. Remain seated and hold your arms out in front of you and simply roll your wrists. Do this 10 times. Now let's try some neck exercises. Stronger neck muscles will help reduce fatigue and discomfort when you're seated for long periods of time at your computer. For the head to shoulder exercise, remain seated and tip your head to the left shoulder holding for five seconds, then straighten your head out. Repeat this for five times. Now tilt your head to the other shoulder. Hold for five seconds, straighten, and repeat that side for five times. Another exercise for strengthening your neck muscles is called the chin push. Take your index finger and push your chin inward as if to line your ears up behind your back. Hold for five seconds and release. Repeat this for a total of five times. Eye fatigue is one of the number one complaints from people who have to spend extended periods of time working in front of their computer screen. Fortunately, this can be avoided by simply looking away from the screen and focusing on a distant object for 10 seconds or so every few minutes. To reduce tension in the facial muscles around the eyes, try the highbrow exercise. This exercise is very simple. Simply raise your eyebrows, hold them for a few seconds, and release. Repeat this exercise five times. Now let's move to the upper back, another key area. It's important to protect the upper back muscles because they carry so much of the stress and strain that we experience when holding a static posture at our workstation. Here's an exercise that will help you to strengthen those upper back muscles. It's called the shoulder pinch. Simply pinch your shoulder blades together, hold for five seconds, 
and then release. Repeat this exercise five times. Another exercise that's great for strengthening the upper back is called the arm push. From a seated position, fold your arms in front of you and push backwards, pinching your shoulder blades together. Hold for five seconds and repeat five times. To strengthen the shoulder muscles, try the shoulder lift. It's a simple exercise. Just lift your shoulders up, hold for five seconds, and release. Repeat for five times. Another exercise that's great for relieving tension in your upper back is called the shoulder roll. Simply roll your shoulders and repeat 10 times for a total of 10 rolls. Shoulder taps can be used to strengthen the upper arm muscles as well as the upper back. To do shoulder taps, simply extend your arms outward from a seated position and bending at the elbows, tap your shoulders. Repeat this exercise 10 times. Now we have a series of exercises for the lower back. The first exercise is called the resistance march. For this exercise, remain seated and get into a position where you can have both feet flat on the floor. You're going to be marching in place, lifting one leg and then the other about six inches off the ground as if you're marching in place. The resistance part of this exercise comes when you place the palms of your hands flat on top of the knees and push against the direction of your march. Repeat this exercise so that you've lifted each leg 10 times. This next exercise is called the leg cross. The purpose of the leg cross is to strengthen the muscles of the lower back and the back of your upper legs. To do this exercise, get into a seated position, both feet flat on the floor. Cross your right leg over the knee of your left leg. Now, holding in that position, lean forward as far as you can, and you're going to feel the pull in your lower back muscles and in the upper parts of your leg muscles. Hold that position for five seconds and then lean back to release. Repeat with each leg five times. This next exercise is called the look up. It's great for releasing tension in your lower back. To do this exercise, stand up, put your hands on your hips and arch your back and look up into the ceiling. Bend back as far as you can. Hold this for 10 seconds. And then slowly straighten up. Repeat this exercise five times. This exercise is called the chair twist. It's terrific for stretching out the muscles in your lower back. To do this exercise, get into a seated position, feet flat on the floor, put your hands on the armrests of your chair. Now take your right hand and move it over on top of your left hand and twist your body around the upper part of your torso as far as you can until you feel a stretch in your lower back. Hold that position for 10 seconds and then release. Take your left hand, place it on top of your right hand and twist your body in that direction and straighten. Repeat this exercise so that you've twisted five times in each direction. 
This exercise is called wheel touches. This is a great exercise for stretching out the muscles of the lower back. To do this exercise, get into a seated position, feet flat on the floor, and we're going to start with your right side. What I want you to do is put both arms over the outside arms of the chair and begin by stretching down with your right side and stretching as if you're trying to touch the wheels of your chair. Hold that position for 10 seconds and then straighten. Now repeat this with your left side. The purpose of this exercise is to release tension in the lower back muscles and you don't want to distort your position or cause any undue strain. Repeat this exercise for a total of five times on each side. This exercise is called the washing machine. It may make you look a little ridiculous, but it's a very effective exercise for strengthening the muscles of the lower back. From a seated position, place both feet flat on the floor, clasp your arms together in front of you, and simply twist back and forth, first to the left, then to the right, while in the seated position. Twist back and forth, repeat so that you have twisted to the left and right a total of five times each. This exercise is called the back arch. It's great for strengthening the muscles in the abdominal area. For this exercise, get into a seated position, put your hands on your knees, lean forward slightly and arch your back, and then lean back, continuing to arch your back. Hold that position for 10 seconds, and then release and straighten your back out. Repeat this exercise five times. We're going to begin this last segment by doing a series of exercises designed to increase circulation in your legs and strengthen various leg muscles. Begin by standing up. This exercise is called the standing leg stretch. We're going to place our left hand on the desk and fold our right leg up behind, grabbing our ankle. Pull so that your leg is straight with the other. Hold this position for 10 seconds. You're going to feel a stretch in front of your leg. After 10 seconds, release and rest. You'll then repeat the same thing with your left leg. Do this a total of three times for each leg. This exercise is called the standing leg lift for balance. It's identical to the exercise you just did, except that you don't touch the surface of the desk to help balance yourself. It's a bit of a challenge, so be careful. To begin, fold your right leg up behind, grabbing your ankle. Pull so your leg is straight with the other and hold for 10 seconds you're going to feel the stretch in front of your leg. After 10 seconds, release and rest. Repeat this with the left leg. Repeat this a total of three times for each leg. Now we're going to do some seated leg lifts. The purpose of the seated leg lifts is to increase circulation in the legs and to strengthen the muscles of the legs. To do a seated leg lift, Obviously, you have to be seated. First of all, you'll start by putting both feet flat on the ground and then extending your right leg straight out and holding that position for 10 seconds. Next, repeat that with the left leg, holding for 10 seconds. Repeat this exercise so that you've done both legs a total of five times. This exercise is called the hamstring stretch. The hamstring is a muscle that extends from your buttocks to the back of your knee. The purpose of this exercise is to release tension in the hamstring muscle. To perform this exercise, start from a seated position. Once you're in the seated position, move up just a little bit in your seat. Extend your right leg out in front of you so that the knee is locked and that your toe is pointed upwards. Now when you're doing this, notice you are going to have to be fairly far forward on your seat. 
Don't get so far forward that you risk falling off. Next, put your right hand on your knee and lean forward. Keeping that leg locked, you're going to feel the tension in your hamstring. Lean forward for 10 seconds. And after that, lean up and release the tension. Repeat this with your left leg. Leg out, knee locked, toe pointed, hand on your knee, lean forward, and you're going to feel that tension in your hamstring. Again, hold this position for about 10 seconds, and then lean back to release the tension. Repeat this a total of three times for each leg. This exercise is called toe points. The purpose of toe points is to keep blood from pooling in your legs and lower body. It's a great idea to do a few of these every once in a while during the day. To do the toe points, start from a seated position, extend your right leg straight out, lock your knee, and point your toe out as hard as you can. You're going to feel the tension in your muscles. Hold that position for five seconds, then release and put the leg down. Repeat this with your left leg. Knee locked, point the toe, hold for five seconds, and then release. Repeat this exercise a total of three times for each leg. This exercise is called March in Place. The purpose of this exercise is to strengthen the leg muscles and increase circulation in your legs. This exercise is done from a seated position. It's very simple. From your seated position, simply lift each leg up four to six inches, hold it for a few seconds, and put it down. Alternate legs as if you are indeed marching in place. Do this so that you've lifted each leg a total of about 10 times. There. Don't you feel better already? You have less tension, better blood flow. These exercises will help to prevent repetitive strain injuries. The exercises are simple and unobtrusive. You can do them anytime and anywhere. You should do them every day. Now you can go back to life at your computer in a little more comfort. And speaking of comfort, stay tuned because we're going to give you some pointers on how to make your workstation more ergonomically correct. Remember, do these exercises. Protect your health. Number one, don't stay leaning towards a computer screen. Keep your nose off the screen. Vary your posture. Number two, take micro breaks. Every 30 seconds or so, take your hands off the keyboard. Even taking a break for a couple of seconds will help relax your muscles. Number three, take a stretch break every 15 minutes or as often as you can to relax your muscles. Number four, look away from the computer screen every few minutes or so. Let your eyes focus on a distant object, perhaps out a window, for at least 10 seconds. This will give your eye muscles a break and reduce eye strain. Number five, don't rest your elbows on the arms of the chair while you're typing. This results in an incorrect typing posture. Number six, Take your hand off the mouse while you wait for a web page or a program to load. Shift your posture back into your chair while you wait. Number seven, get moving. Move your printer or scanner across the room. Send your print files to a printer on another side of the office. It will force you to get up out of your chair. Number eight, keep sufficient space under your desk for your knees. Don't store things under your desk that interfere with being able to swing your legs in and out easily. Number nine, if you can, position your computer screen to minimize glare and reflections. Glare can cause visual discomfort from eye strain and neck muscle pain as you might squint or hold your head in awkward positions to compensate for the glare. Number 10, your desk or workstation should have an adjustable task light for your paper-based work. Number 11, if you are working from paper to computer screen, try to keep the paper on the same plane as the screen. There are various holders on the market that can be attached directly to the screen. 
Number 12, make sure you know how to adjust your chair and make sure that you adjust your chair to fit your body size. And finally, number 13, remember to vary your posture and relax. Muscle tension significantly increases your risk of computer-related disorders, so remember to relax.